お待たせ。Thank you for your patience.The 59th TIEC Cross Culture Seminar is about to begin.The theme of the seminar is Kendama, a fun toy of creation and imagination.We hope you will enjoy it. Before opening the session, we would like to go over a housekeeping announcement. This cross culture seminar is being broadcasted on two YouTube channels. For English, please access TIEC and HIHIH channel. For Japanese, please access TIEC and HIH channel 2. Recording audio or video on this seminar is strictly prohibited. This applies to the audience on YouTube as well. Please refrain from recording audio or video on this seminar. To kick off the event, on behalf of the organizer, Mr. Takafumi, Ota, with Japan Student Services Organization, will make an opening remark. Hello, everyone. I'm Ota, Deputy Executive Director, Student Exchange Department of Japan Student Services Organization. Thank you very much for joining us today at TIEC Kokusai Juku or Cross Culture Seminar. The Cross Culture Seminar invites leading experts in various fields in Japan as lecturers to provide participants with opportunities to deepen multifaceted understanding of Japan and Japanese culture. Due to the pandemic, we have continued the seminar as online events to prevent infection, but this year, We are fully reviving the face to face sessions while continuing the online sessions as well. The theme of this year's cross culture seminar is Japanese fads spread to the world, where we are re- featuring items that have become popular in Japan, then have spread overseas, attracting the world's attention. This year's third session, the 59th in total, is titled Kendama. A fun toy of creation and imagination, we have invited Mr. Hiroyuki Sunahara, representative of Sunahara Dream Planning Company Limited and head of the West Hiroshima branch of the Japan Kendama Association, who will give us a lecture on Kendama. Kendama is a toy consisting of a cross shaped sword or stick and a bow with a hole in it, and is played not only in Japan but also all over the world. In Japan, Kendama was established as a children's game at the end of the 19th century during the Meiji era and at the beginning of the 12th, 20th century during the Taisho era. The current form of Kendama, the Nichigetsu or Sun and Moon Bowl, was almost completed. The inventor of the Nichigetsu Bowl, Egusa Hamaji, visited then Hatsukaichi, Saeki County, Hiroshima Prefecture, now Hatsukaichi City, and asked the factory there to manufacture his invention, which led to the creation of the Kendama culture in Hatsukaichi. This is the reason why Hatsukaichi is called the birthplace of Kendama. Mr. Sunahara is a native of Hatsukaichi City. He is a Kendama master who is active around the world. So, I'm sure we will hear many interesting stories about Kendama in his lecture. In the Hanson session, second part of the seminar, he will share with us tips on how to improve our Kendama skills. I hope you will enjoy today's seminar and learn something new. With this, I would like to conclude my remarks. We will now begin the first part of the seminar. The theme of this first part is fascination of Kendama spreading around the world and its history. We have invited a Kendama master who is actively promoting the toy, that's Mr. Hiroyuki Sunahara, representative of Sunahara Dream Planning Company Limited, who will give us a lecture. Mr. Sunahara, known as a Kendama master, is a former elementary school teacher in Hiroshima Prefecture. During his teaching days, he taught Kendama to elementary school children. He later retired from teaching in order to further promote the fascination of Kendama 
and is now very active in promoting the toy, holding kendama classes both in Japan and abroad as well as producing kendama products. He's involved in wide ranging activities. As a representative of Sunahara Jun Planning Company Limited, he sells kendama online at Kendama Shop Yume. As the head of the Nishi Hiroshima branch of the Japan Kendama Association, he is actively promoting kendama. And in Hatsukaichi City, Hiroshima Prefecture, which is said to be the birthplace of kendama, he works as a part time elementary school teacher as well. In today's lecture, Mr. Sunahara will talk based on his knowledge and experience to share his perspective on kendama. Now, Mr. Sunahara, the stage is yours. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Sunahara with a round of applause. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. I am Sunahara. Well, creativity and imagination. Creation and imagination, these are the theme. Now I'd like to show you some tricks for absolute beginners and the children. Kendama cooking for using eggs. Okay, it's an egg. One, two, three, and boil the egg. One, two, three, Japanese omelet. Then egg over rice. One, two, omelet. One, two. Sunny side up. Well, like this. Even for children, I thought about this kind of method to enjoy King Dama and also for elder people. This should be enjoyable. So we like to, I'd like to share creation and imagination with everyone today. Thank you very much for having me. Well, let's go to see some slides. History and fascination of kendama spreads around the world. First of all, let me quickly introduce myself. I was born in Hatsuka Ichi City, Hiroshima Prefecture in 1953. When I was little, I was playing this kendama, and when back then there was no name such as kendama. It was called at Nissan. I think this came from Nichigetsu board. Anyway, I was using this toy to amuse myself. Then, after I grew up, I became a school teacher. Then from the Showa era to Heisei, there was a shift moment, and I also met Kendama at that time. Since then, I've been enjoying playing Kendama with many children, and I focus on study and Kendama every day. I was so inspired by Kendama, so after 28 years of my service, at an elementary school, I decided to retire. And then, decided to explore, explore and spread the fascination of kendama to the world. So here are some examples of what I have done as kendama promotion activities. The, at the left top, I did some demonstration at a kindergarten. The kindergarten or nursery kids cannot do any complicated trick. So I have just shown you like this. This is unicorn. So I usually start from this kind of presentation. So showing how to play kendama for kindergarten or elementary school children. And then on the right hand side and right bottom picture, this is actually sumo wrestling, kendama sumo wrestling. So some elementary schools 
kindergarten nurseries, and community events are the places I mainly introduce kendama. And at least maybe 400 cases have been covered. And I have actually expanded to overseas too after I retired. In these 70 years, I visited so many countries, starting with Mongolia. The bottom left picture was taken in Mongolia. I actually have visited there for 10 times in 10 years. And the left top picture was taken four years ago in Mexico, in Guanajuato State. As you can see, there are two large signs. In Mexico, they have Valero War, which are very similar to Kendama. So there was a sort of competition between Valero, Valero and Kendama. So in front of a very famous theater of Mexico, there were these two big signs showing that there will be a competition of Valero and Kendama. However, just right before starting the competition, there was a score, so we couldn't hold that event outside. So we had to go in to that venue. That is the picture in the middle. From Hiroshima, we had a governor, Yusa Misa Yusaki, and also the governor of the Mexico uh, in this picture, and I introduced the term of Kendama. And the second from left at the bottom is myself and my sort of father in Mexico. And then the, the bottom middle picture was taken in Peru. And top right picture, the large picture, is also taken in Peru. I actually conducted a Kendama class. And the far right button, in Mexico City, there was, actually there is, a community of people from Hiroshima. And they hosted an event. And then we played Kendama together. And second right from the bottom, there are three ladies. And the third lady from the right was a junior high school student back then. But in this August, she actually came to Japan. And in the factory of Matsuda in Hiroshima, we actually had some events as well. That is the picture in the middle. We had some kingdom event with students from Mexico and the United States. And the girl whom I met in Mexico before is now a high school student, and she joined this event again. And we really had a great time. So far, for overseas, I started visiting from Mong Mongolia, and Philippines, China, Taiwan, New Zealand, Hawaii, Mexico, Peru. So I visited so many places to introduce fascination of Kendama. So here, what is Kendama? Well, Japanese traditional toy to try to catch the ball by Sara Cup and Ken Ping. A simple wooden toy, but it has many techniques variations. So let me quickly introduce how it's like. Okay, now I have Kendama. There are three cups, big cup, small cup, and a base cup. And you need to capture the ball on these cups or put in the spike. So it's infinite 
of creation and imagination. Just for the big cup, there are so many different ways to put on the big cup. This is the very basic one. After this, swing like this side, swing to the front, and then put your finger, and then swing more, and then ends with the big cup. Using your finger and twist even more and release the string like this. When the string goes to the front, you can put the board on the cup, but you can actually swing it and roll the string around the stick too. And then concent put concentration, I like that too. Just ending with the big cup. There are so many different ways to enjoy. So as like uni unicorn transformation. Now it's called unicorn because of the major league or tiny. And when I visited some other countries, when I showed this, everyone said, wow, it's unicorn. So you can actually transform yourself to something different by using kendama. And I found something interesting in Mexico. As for the transformation series, I did like this. Then one guy in Mexico said, wow, that's Anpan Man. It's a Japanese cartoon character. I know Japanese cartoon animations are very popular in many other countries, but he pointed out that was Anpanma. So this is Kendama. You can use your imagination and creation in many ways. And even for the beginners, this is a crab. Now flower is blooming. So you can use your imagination and create different ways to play Kendama. This is dinosaurs, Tyrannosaurus. Then Dragon Ball, Ka, Me, Ha, Me, Ha. Like this, you can play in many different ways. It goes up, goes down, it's a lift or elevator. And put a string like this, it's an escalator. So the tricks are infinite. Children can also invent his or her own tricks. And you can see this is one of a lighting bag. So as I have just shown to you, three cups and a spike and the ball, just with this com combination of these items, Tricks can be created infinitely. And regardless of age, children, and early people, and nationality, without feeling any language barriers, you can enjoy. That is Kendama. So let's go back to the slide. I have briefly explained how kendama is structured. They, we have a name based on the stick and the ball, but there's a one thing many people misunderstand. A big cup, a small cup, and a middle cup, if we literally translate from Japanese into English, these are big small and medium. Therefore, people misunderstand. These three words are talking about the sizes, but actually not. The middle does not mean the middle size. This cup located in the middle. Therefore, in the size wise, the middle cup is the smallest one, which is the base cup. So between the large cup and smaller cup, there is a middle cup, which is the base cup. But when it comes to the size, there are 
most of the times that middle cup is the smallest. Well, let's touch on some histories. There are so many different kinds, as you can see from this picture. Well, explanation of names of kendama are slightly different from the reality, so I actually would like to use actual kendama to explain. In the world, there are so many different kinds of kendama, but I just like to show you some of them. This is also kendama from Denmark. This came from the reindeer horns. Actually, made with reindeer horn. This is stick, and this is pole. It's like this. Oh, I couldn't make it. Actually, it looks more difficult than you think. So, this is from Denmark, made with reindeer horn. But there are so many different candles made with animals' bones, especially when it comes to the northern part with very cold climate. They have to use some tools to capture some animals. So there were so many, there were so many hunters, and the tools for hunters transformed into this kind of toy, kendama. One more thing. When I went to Mon Mongolia, at the border between Russia and Mongolia, I found this one in a village. This is one of the kendama. You see holes and there's a ball. Do you know how to play it? It's, it's passed through the hole. Usually with kendama, you land the ball on the cup. But in this case, you pass the ball through the hole. This is how you play this kendama. It's from a Mongolia, a small village near the border with Russia. There are many kinds of kendama all around the world. This is Palero from Mexico. In South America, Mexico, Peru, and Colombia, in these countries, this kind of kendama is found. Some, there is a thing in common. That's bow and a, and a stick. This is from France. It's called bilboquet. Stick and a bow. That's a round bow. This one is a, a little different. This one is also different. Bilbo, with bilboquet from France used to be a plate a, a made of a wine glass and a knit bowl. And when they had a party, when they had a banquet and nice French meals, they drank wine and enjoyed this play with the wine glass and a knit bowl. And then in the 16th century, this type of kendama was produced. This is called bilboke. It's still being produced in France. It's, it's got a long rot. There are many variations still in France they are available. And this bilboke from France was ex imported to Japan during the Edo period in 17th, 18th century. Not through French, but through Dutch people. When they came to Japan from ne the Netherlands, they brought the bilboke. And Japan was closed at the time. And Nagasaki is the only port that was open to overseas. There is a, an island called Dejima. And then from Nagasaki, it spread around Japan. And it came to Hiroshima Prefecture as well. So Kendama started during the uh, Edo period, and it was played at banquets by adults. 
not for children at the time. But then, during the Meiji period, it became a children's game. Uh, the Ministry of Education, when the time was turned from Edo to Meiji, the ministry was founded and the ministry created schools nationwide and then recommended children to play with kendama. And since then, kendama has been played by children nationwide. But at that time, the kendama was like this, similar to bilboke. So children played with kendama. Then during from Meiji to Taisho, about 105 years ago, in Hiroshima, there's this person called Hamaji Egusa living in Kure City. He went to Osaka and he used to work there. Then he loved kendama. And he used to play in Osaka, street kendama, you may call it. On the street, he used to play with kendama, like street play, with this type of kendama. And he liked it very much. But there was only rot and ball. There are limited techniques, just a land, and spike are the techniques with this type of kendama. But he wanted to make it more fun. So he used his imagination and creation. And he thought well, maybe it's a good idea to attach a cup to it, cup body. And that's he created, invented this shape of kendama. And then he applied for a patent, and he got it. It wasn't called kendama at the time. It was called nichi getsubo. Nichi means the sun in Japanese. It's, uh, it's the sun. Um, getsu means the moon. These cups are shaved like this. And when you looked sideways, you could see it as a crescent moon. Not a full moon, but it looked like a crescent moon. That's why he called it Nichigetsubo, or sun and moon bow. That was 105 years ago. So Kendama used to use a red bow. So this gentleman called Hamaji Egusa invented this type of kendama, and he wanted to create it, but he couldn't. So he thought that if I go to Hatsukaichi in Hiroshima, maybe I could ask somebody to produce kendama, mass-produce kendama. And then he came over to Hatsukaichi. So I'm going back to my seat. Now, so this is the kendama made of reindeer bones and balero from Mexico and Nichigets bow and biboke. I'm sorry, the captions are wrong, but now you know what it means. So, Mr. Egusa came to Hatsukaichi during the uh, 1777. There was a record that ken kendama was played at banquets by, and then during the Meiji period, it became a children's game. And in 1918, um, Hamaji Egusa invented the Nichigets bowl, as I t told you. Then he came to Hatsukaichi and looked for a manufacturer and came to Hatsukaichi city. Then in 
This is the Japanese map, and this is the Hiroshima's map, and Hatsukaichi is in Hiroshima Prefecture. Hatsukaichi has um, Itsukushima Shrine, a Miyajima, which is the World Heritage. Hatsukaichi used to be uh, renowned for woodworking. Then that's the history of Hatsukaichi. It's very important. So as you can see from the map, this is the Hiroshima Prefecture. Hiroshima Prefecture is located in the mountain. I mean, the northern part of Hiroshima has lots of mountains. And on the seaside, we have the sea and the mountain. It's very rich in nature. And Hatsukaichi city also got mountain in the north and the sea in the south. So in the northern part of Hatsukaichi, there is a Chugoku mountains, high mountains called Chugoku Sanchi. And the wood timber from there came to Hatsukaichi. So Hatsukaichi kind of timber port for ports, uh, sorry, timber from all over Japan. About, that was about 800 years ago. Kiyomori Taira, a famous person in Japanese history, created, built the uh, Itsukushima Shrine in Miyajima Island. And that shrine is located in the sea and there is a gate, big gate. And when he built the shrine and the, sh the, the gate, he wanted a skilled craftsmen and he collected craftsmen, skilled craftsmen from all over Japan. But only one and two years, too short. So they stayed, lived in Hatsukaichi to create the uh, big um, gate for the shrine. And that's how they developed their woodworking skills. Then those craftsmen started to teach them uh, crafts, um, woodworking techniques. That's how Hatsukaichi became famous as a woodworking town. And that's the background. Hatsukaichi was very um, well known as a woodworking town. So that's why Hamaji Egusa thought that uh, it's a good place to visit, and uh, the Hatsukaichi is a good place to visit to look for a manufacturer to uh, produce kendama. That's how it started. That was 102 years ago. And that's how Hatsukaichi was called as the birthplace of kendama. Now you're seeing the pictures. It's called Kendama Park in Hatsukaichi. You see the playground equipment, and you see um, kendama on top. So in Hatsukaichi, we have many things featuring kendama. On the right-hand side, you see that's a kendama park, the kendama monument made of stone is there. And that's a symbol of the Hatsukaichi as the birthplace of Kendama. About 10 years ago, at this park, the first World Cup, uh, Kendama World Cup was held. Then at the bottom, you see the uh, city hall of Hatsukaichi. And when I took the picture, that was 19th, on the 19th, in Hatsukaichi, on the uh, 20th of each month, they have, we have a morning market. It's been held for centuries. On the 20th of each month, a morning market is held. And mainly wood, wooden products are sold there. 
and because it's close to the mountain and the sea, they have a, a food produce. But traditionally, we have this kind of morning market at the tents be, uh, in front of the city hall. And in this Hatsukaichi city, the picture next to it, we have wood utilization center where we produce kendama. The right one, there is an office. On the second floor, there is a big hall where I teach kendama. I hold kendama classes there. On the left-hand side, that's the uh, workshop to produce kendama. There is a um, manufacturing machine of kendama. And going back, um, this is the uh, machine to produce kendama. The left one, uh, called kendama naruko. You create sound with this and Nietzsche gets ball. So at first, it, was, it wasn't shaved. Now you see, you see this kind of grip there. But before, this is actually the one I used to play when I was a child. When I was a child, that was 64, five years ago. I used to use this kendama without grip. Well, the color has been changed from Nichigetsu ball. Then cups were green. This represents the earth. And the stick yellow represents the moon. And the sun Currently, the ball is red, and the gate of Itsukushima Shrine is an orange, orangish red color. Therefore, this old kingdom's red is slightly different from the current red color of the board. But this is what the one I was using when I was little. And here is the picture of a kendama manufacturing machine. By using this kind of machine, bowls, sticks, cups are manufactured. And as you can see here, we have cups, sticks, and bowls. And also just right in front of you, there are some panels explaining the flow of manufacturing too. So this is the machine to be used the first. So first we take a timber and make it dry for three years. And after that, it has to be carved from circle to square, a cubic art style. And then make it even more smaller and put that process of timber into this machine. And after that, this machine can rotate. Then the wood material can be shaped to the sphere style or this stick style, stick shape. So this is actually based on the wood turning technology. However, this kind of machine became very rare now. However, kingdom is now everywhere in the world. But when you see other countries, they are not using this kind of machine anymore. They put a huge PC and applying AI technology. Therefore, they, they put just data into the PC. And robot can read the data from the PC and carve timber or wooden parts to the perfect shape of kendama. 
Therefore, the technology has been very advanced, and those new technologies and new machines are used, are used to create kendama. However, from the perspectives of Hatsukaichi, we actually decided to conserve the original machine. Therefore, in kendama manufacturers in Hatsukaichi, they are still using this machine. So you can see how it will be proce processed. OK, let's have fun together. Now, kendama is very popular around the world. From since the 2000, kendama has become popular overseas as a street sport kendama, mainly in the United States. Then, in response to the global boom, the first Kingdom World Cup was held 10 years ago and one year before in 2013. There are so many Kingdom players from the world gathered in Hiroshima, and I met them too and communicated with them. And we all said that we would love to have a big kingdom event, and we hope we can realize it in next year. Then, one year later, in 2014, we could have the first kingdom World Cup. As you can see, the picture of the first kingdom World Cup 2014, and this was actually taken in the sub venue for children's kingdom small tournament. So it's like this. The ball is on the base cup. And then two kids hit their kingdom balls each other and then try to make the competitors ball down ball fall down, falling down. And I actually I invented this kind of Tournament, sumo tournament. The players join the Kingdom World Cup. The winner of the first time was an American guy. He actually invented so many different tricks. So we were so inspired by them and we felt like it was sort of a cultural difference. We were shocked too. But since then, many Japanese players also. improve their skills too. However, from children's perspective, they thought that, wow, we can do that. But we want them enjoy kendama. That's why we decided to have this kendama sumo tournament, and they all loved it. It was very successful, both at the main venue and the sub venue for children. And the first Kingdom World Cup was successfully ended. That's why we continue to have it every year. And the left picture is was taken in Peru. And when I visited there four years ago, I held many Kingdom classes, and they all were successful. In any country, although we are unable to understand with our languages, Kingdom connected us. And here is here are some examples of a fun toy, fun way of enjoying kendama. You can build a block with kendama. And the right hand side we say that challenge. As you can see from these pictures, you actually put kendama into the vertical orientation and trying to make it like a totem pole as high as possible. And the maximum record is six. One, two, three, four, five, six in a vertical position. That was the highest record. And then there is another picture at the top. This is 
a building block of the Bulls, and the highest score was 16. So far, I couldn't make it until 14 Bulls. But there was a mother of small children who actually reviewed that record and she made it with 16 Bulls. She was playing. With these kingdom balls with her children, and she made the record. Then, by using kingdom itself, the highest record was six. That was achieved by the boy, of the boy in the, his sixth grade. And the right bottom picture is showing one of the examples. Of community event. As you can see, this father and his son are also enjoying this building block of Kendama together. The community events are very foyer. Of course, in Hatsukaichi and some other cities in Hiroshima. And the left top picture is from Hatsukaichi Cherry Blossom Festival. In April. And in that festival, we see so many people around 50,000 to 60,000 people. And then we sometimes have Kendama Survival event. I actually want to do that today, but maybe there aren't enough audience to have it. And the left button picture is at a corporate event of a real estate company. The children participated at the event too. At the boy in the middle, was so touched by the charm of. Kendama since then, and now he is one of the top players in Japan. I believe that he would win the final position in next year. And the right bottom picture is from the community event, Marukuru Ono Otano Festival. There are many. Gymnastics facilities were, were built, so that was sort of celebration. And not only Hatsukaiji, but also in this Tokyo, we have so many events too. And the picture at the right top this character is called Slyly from Hiroshima Cup. He did actually great. So, as you can see, even just with these pictures, Kendama is loved by many people. So, let me go back to some slides related to history. Yes, this page. Due to the World War II, Kendam production stopped. But after the end of war, 1946, Kendam production resumed. Then in 1970, approximately 300,000 Kendama were produ produced nationwide, 70% of which were produced in Hatsukaichi. Then after a while, around 400,000 Kendama started be, were produced nationwide, and there were ten craftsman studios or companies manufactured kendama. But the number has been gradually decreased. However, when we see overseas, some companies、uh, there were number of companies manufacturing kendama has been increased gradually. Then, however, when it comes to the Japan situation in, in Hatsukaichi, there was 
all, all Kendama companies disappeared in 1988. But there was only one company survived. And the president visited the elementary school I used to work for, and he introduced the term of Kendama to us. And we did not have Kendama at school, but he, we decided to buy three Kendama. And the president of the school said, well, since we already bought three Kendamas, can anyone become a volunteer to teach how to play Kendama to children? And I decided to take that role. Since then, I've been enjoying playing Kendama with children. And we had 400 students at the school I used to work for, and half of them started playing Kendama since then. And three years later, there was no company produce Kendama. However, I still worked on to promote Kendama. Although Kendama companies or factory were disappeared in 1998, I still worked on for the promotion and two years later, we decided to put our efforts to resume the production. So we built the utilization center and collaborated with all other seahorse and some other communities too. And then as for the gift for the first grade students, Kendama has been distributed to every student. And I am still, since then, I've been teaching children how to play Kendama. And then 2012, the global Kendama network called Gloken was established. In addition to Japan Kendama Association, a new association called Gloken was established. Mr. Kubota is the representative. When I went to Mongolia, he came with me. And Mr. Kubota established the uh, global Kendama network or Gloken. And that led to the first World Cup, Kendama World Cup. And that's how Kendama spread around the world. That's all for my lecture about Kendama. Now, I would like to have a performance and a hands-on session with you. And let's have fun. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Mr. Sunahara, for your impressive Kendama um, lecture. Ladies and gentlemen, please um, give, give him a w big round of applause. If you're watching on YouTube, this is the end of today's Kokusaijuku or Cross-Cultural Seminar. Japan Student Services Organization is running a variety of international exchange events. We look forward to your participation. Thank you very much for joining us today.